Welcome to Naples, Florida, home of some of the world's most pristine beaches, also the pickleball capital of the world, as we welcome you to the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville. We're not too far away from that gorgeous site. Here inside Zing Zang Championship Court, it's been rocking here all week long. We're sold out for the final two days of competition as the pros are set to take center stage. Great to have you with us, everybody. Drew Felios with Melissa McCurley and Mark Renison. Guys, 2018 has proven to really be a very special year. A very special year. A record number amount of players, record number of matches, and an absolute record amount of energy and excitement. That's right. Mark, I know you've been tracking the individual athletes. Who to you has really stood out this year? Well, local pro Simone Jardim has been great in the women's side, and Tyson McGuffin from Yakima, Washington, has been electric in the singles and doubles. All right, we're going to see some tremendous pickleball here over the next few hours. For those of you who have not sampled this sport thus far, what is pickleball? Well, here are the standard rules. Yeah, so games to 11 points, you must win by two, and that's a standard two out of three games. Points can only be scored by the serving team. Unlike some other sports, you've got to serve underhand in pickleball. You've got to serve diagonally across the court. And the ball must bounce both on the returner side and again on the server side. Yeah, these rallies can get so interesting, especially in doubles competition. And always keep in mind the kitchen. You cannot step on that line. That's right. So the kitchen, also known as the non-volley zone, is a seven-foot space back from the net. And you can go into that zone, but you can't volley. You can't hit the ball out of the air if it hasn't bounced yet. So you'll see players get right up close to it, reach over it, because it's only a two-dimensional surface, and try to get those balls before they get too low. So today the focus is women's doubles. And Melissa, I know that anywhere Simone Jardim goes, she seems to draw a crowd. She really does. She's a local favorite. She's just an electrifying player. She's last year's Triple Crown winner, and she and Corinne are the favorite here, being the repeat if they can tonight. And Tarashenko and Kovalova had a good win. Three games, a solid 11-3 in the third game over Ansbury and McGrath. When we return, the Women's Doubles Pro Championship at the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville. U.S. Open Pickleball Championships on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by DuraFast 40, official pickleball of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships by Head Pickleball, official shoe of the U.S. Open Pickleball Championships. And by Latitude Margaritaville and Minto. Change your latitude to the active adult paradise of Latitude Margaritaville. Well, it has been a spectacular week here in Naples, Florida, as we have locked ourselves into the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships Powered by Margaritaville. The sun has gone down here on Zing Zang Championship Court. Got a nice shade under this and what is considered the Super Bowl of pickleball. And we have got a tremendous match that we're going to witness here. Jardim and Carr taking on Tereshenko and Kovalova. Corinne Carr leads us off in the women's pro doubles here today. Yeah, Corinne, uh, she is a professor of finance at Campbell University. She considers pickleball uh, her hobby, and she absolutely loves it. She's the defending champion here at the U.S. Open with Simone Jardim. And Simone, uh, she has had a busy week here in Naples at East Naples Community Park, and she continues to add to her pickleball resume. That's yeah. right, Simo Simone Jardim, she is a, a local hometown favorite. She coaches here, she trains here, and uh, you can see uh, she's such a happy person. She loves being on the court, and that really comes through in the exciting way that she plays the game. On the other side, Irina Tereshenko. First time we're going to see her here in the women's pro doubles. Yeah, Irina and Lucy have played Corinne and so Simone multiple times, most recently back at Nationals, and Irina and Lucy took the silver there. And Lucy Kovalova, former tennis star at Wichita State. She's had quite a week as well. Yes, yeah, she sure has. She is the tennis and pickleball pro at the Wichita Country Club in Wichita, Kansas. And she's certainly going to be hungry for a women's championship here tonight. Yeah, this is sure to be an exciting one here. Irina and Lucy were the silver medalists to Corinne and Simone at the Nationals. Um, well, it's been about six months ago now. Okay, we're starting the game with 0, zero 2 First serve in play. 
underway. So Melissa and Drew, we have a little bit of wind uh, at the backs right now of Kovalova and Tarashenko. So that means the balls that they hit that might otherwise stay in run the risk of going a little bit long. Meanwhile, Corinne Carr and Simone Jardine, they get to hit into the wind, so they can swing freely a little bit more uh, with the expectation that some of those balls will stay in play. Start off with both teams taking, as that one barely gets over the net. Lucy Kovalova in the white. And she hits it. It's close to the line there. Right. It's just it's out. Yep. Will it just out? Yep, so we're going to see this early on in the match where players, all four women, are up at the net Five, looking zero. to pounce on something high. And what they're likely to do to each other most of the time is to play a low, soft, short ball, forcing their opponents to hit upwards. Because if you hit upwards, you're forced to hit slowly if you want to keep that ball in play. So we call those dinks. A good, low dink forces a slower hit, limits your abilities, your opponent's ability to cause much trouble. Is it good in doubles and pickleball for both athletes to have sometimes different strengths to complement each other? Yeah, definitely being able to go back and forth between the fast game and the slow game. Um, you're going to see here right now that uh, Karim Carr how are we going to distinguish him? Corinne Carr, who's got the white shoes, uh, the blonde hair, wearing the visor. She's going to play a lot of the slower balls, and it's going to be Simone who's looking to pounce on something that's high, like that. Teeing off right now. Yeah, and all four of these players play as partners on a regular basis and have for a long time now. So they know each other very well. They know each other's strengths and weaknesses very well. and. Simone and Corinne they have a nice one-two punch, and Corinne's got some of the best defense in the game as well. And then Lucy and Irina, they have strengths in their soft game, in their hard game, and their defense as well. A little bit of a slow start for Lucy Kovalova. So we saw there Irina Tarashenko, who's wearing the gray hat with the pink shorts. She stepped outside of the non-volley zone, outside of the kitchen. The kitchen is a two-dimensional surface. You can't be standing in there and volley the ball out of the air without a bounce. However, you can reach over into that zone, and you can do that from the back of the court, from behind the kitchen line, or you can do it up from outside, beside the non-volley zone, up near the net post, looking to intercept something that's just a little bit too high. Nice show of patience there by all four players. Just waiting, either waiting for that opportunity for that ball to get up high or just waiting for someone to make an error. So key in pickleball as Kovalova hits it a little bit wide and long to just be efficient and be patient as well, Mark. I know that's a lot of what you teach. Yeah, it's important. Being patient doesn't mean always hitting slowly, but it means waiting for the appropriate time to hit fast. And um, these women, if they want to be able to test their opponents to push them. They can't be going for fastballs all the time because their opponents are too good. They're going to be able to handle those fastballs, as we saw there. Oh, that could have been a ball that Lucy Kovalova could have pounced on. So we see that Corinne Carr is definitely the target player early on for Kovalova and Tereshenko. They're going to keep hitting at her, hoping she pops up something like she did there. Lucy Kovalova's fired up. Yeah, she is. And I know Karen was hoping to get that ball pushed just by her across the middle. But Lucy had that paddle up, and she was ready. Sometimes we call that sitting on the back end. I spoke with Lucy about this a little while ago, about this idea of being ready for that ball. Not, not being ready for anything, but expecting that ball coming to the back end, sitting on that back end. And then when it's there, you know exactly what to do with it. Simone has had benefit of what has felt like a home crowd on her side. She 
is a coach here locally in the Naples area. And it sounds like a lot of her students, a lot of her fans, and the crowd watching. They are definitely here. As somebody does her teaching right here at these courts at the East Naples Community Park. Oh, tough one that time. And Kovalova got caught in the eye. And Mark, that is a stinger. I know it, this ball is a ball that is hollow, but still, when it hits you, it hurts. Yeah, you'll see here it went off the paddle. Uh, <laughs> gave her a little bit of a shock. They're not going to call a timeout. They're going to keep playing. Now notice after Tarashenko returns that she's probably going to run all the way over to the left. That's right, because she wants to play on the left side. That's her preferred side here. Oh. And we call that stacking and uh, pickleball, Mark. What do you think Irene is thinking in wanting to take that strategy here with Lucy here tonight? Well, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to set it up so that Lucy Kovalova gets to play uh, forehands when they go out wide to her, to Kovalova. And by putting her on the right-hand side, if they're going to go wide enough that Kovalova has to play it, it's going to be with her forehand, which she likes. Tarashenko, on the other hand, likes playing those backhand dinks. So even though she's, it's her turn to serve from the right, she's going to serve. She's going to slide over to the left right here and now play from her preferred side. Corinne had called Simone off a couple times in that point, but eventually Jardine knew the right time to step in. Yeah, and it's a way, you know, when you have a play, when you have a player that you're targeting, the way that Kovalova and Tereshenko are targeting Corinne Carr, then the other player's job is to put some pressure on to say, fine, if you're going to hit the target player, you better be really precise because I'm hovering over the middle there. I'm looking to intercept something. I'm looking to poach, and if you want to get it to the target player, you better be really on target. It's a good deep return. So hitting the ball as a return of serve deep is really important because that means that when you're up at the net, when you're up at the kitchen line, your opponents have a long distance they have to hit that ball, which means you're going to have more time to handle it. And even if they do get a good shot, they're going to have a further distance they have to run to get up to the net. So you're going to see these players mostly hitting returns of serve that keep their opponents behind the baseline as they're hitting that third shot. Uh, this great game of pickleball, Melissa, it seems like the double scene. A little bit more fun to watch, also more fun to participate in. Why than singles? Well, I think as most people get started playing pickleball as doubles players. So there's certainly a lot more singles going on in pickleball. There was singles this week here in Naples. And so it, uh, I think, too, Drew, it being such a social sport, it just really kind of caters doubles more in that respect from a recreational perspective. No gimmies in this first game. Well, we're seeing the great defense by Corinne and, and Simone here. Wow. <laughs> oh. Unbelievable. And that's the defense I was talking about. Both players can do it. One for the highlight reel. And that really got the crowd going. We got some standing ovations going on in the room. And more than anything, I think that um, winning that rally for Kovalova and Tereshenko gives them confidence that they can play with this team. They've been down early on in the match. They're coming back. They're, they're still in it. Only, only down with two points here, and they've got the serve. It's one thing to get points. It's another to win those emotional points. Tremendous hand-eye coordination, which is so critical in excelling in this sport. 
That's right. Being able to make good, solid contact between your pad and the ball is vital. You might have a really great swing, but if you don't hit the center of the paddle, you're going to have trouble controlling the ball. So all these women have to be alert. They've got to be quick. They've got to have their paddles ready. And they've got to be ready to move to get that ball exactly where it needs to be. Second serve. Well, Irina certainly looks to have a little extra bounce in her step. Just a little miscommunication there when that ball came back through the middle. Uh, right through the middle can be a good place to hit, especially if you're hitting fast. Doesn't give your opponents very much time to discuss who's going to take it. Now, uh, Drew, I just noticed our statistician, Josh Elliott, tells us that that was the first third shot drive that Carr and Jardim have hit all match so far. That means that all of their third shots, the serve, return, and the third shot up to that point, have been third shot drops, which are slow, low shots designed to force your opponents to hit up when they're at the kitchen line, limiting their ability to cause much trouble. That was the first drive of the whole match in the third shot. 8-4 now, Jardim and Carr with the lead. And we serve here. That is the eighth unforced error that Carr and Jardim have made. If they want to be able to hold on to this first game, they better put an end to that quickly. So to me, that's an example, Melissa, of that, you know, earlier in the day when there wasn't so much wind, I'm betting that ball staying in. But with the breeze at Kovalova's back, that ball lands just a couple feet long. Yeah, and it's gotten quite, quite breezy in here. Significant breeze coming from the back. So at the back of Lucy and Irina. We get a side out, 8-4-1 with Corinne Carr serving. She's on her preferred side, which is the right side, so they're going to be playing what we call straight up. She's going to serve. The return has to be allowed to bounce, and there's another third shot drop forcing Kovalova to hit upwards. That could have been intercepted by Tereshenko. Yeah, great job here, though, by Irina moving Simone and Corinne around. Good job then by them to get to back up to the line as well. As yeah. Irina continues to move them. Finally went for it. Yeah, so I've noticed that as they're working Karin Carr, she looks a little uncertain about whether she's going to play these balls out of the air uh, as a volley or let the ball bounce and play it as a dink. And there's a few times that you've seen that she's sort of stayed up at the line and then the last second dropped back a step. That last second decision making and that extra movement does pose a risk that she's going to set the ball up a little bit too high. Yeah, and there's two high balls right there in a row from Corinne. Lucy's been prepared for both of them. Yeah, for the viewers at home, as a general rule, not always, but as a general rule, if you can play the ball before it bounces, you should. It limits your opponent's ability to have time to get ready, and you're more likely to be on balance and position when you hit it than if you let that ball bounce and have to back up. Another great shot by Kovalova. Guys, it's funny, when I talked to Lucy, I asked her, Lucy, how much do you play this game? And she says, be honest with you, Drew, just once a week. I find that hard to believe somebody this good, this skilled, can play it as little as she does and have the success she does. Yeah, it probably helps her a bit that she is a teaching pro as well. So even though she may not be specifically out working on her game, she is spending time out on the court and hitting balls. And sometimes, Melissa, it's actually good in pickleball to take a little bit of a break, to not play as much, clear your head, right? And make sure you're good whenever you do play. Yeah, that's right. You can you can play too much pickleball, and people do tend to play this game multiple hours a day over several days. So giving your body some rest will help you get through some of that fatigue. Because, Drew, I think we've talked about before that pickleball mat or brackets are played all in one day. And so they can play multiple matches in a day before they get to a final, like we see here. Drew and Melissa, I just got an alert that we have now hit the 30 shot mark for the uh, third shot, the third shots of the match so far. And of those 30 third shots, 
Only four of them have been third shot drives. So all four of these women are thinking they're not going to overpower their opponents right off the bat. They're going to play a good drop. They're going to work their way up towards the net and start going with the soft game. Tarashenko and Kovalova have battled their way back into this game. All tied at eight in game number one from Naples. Overhead shot of beautiful Naples, Florida. And it has just been a perfect week of pickleball here at the pickleball capital of the world. And inside Zing Zang Championship Court, it's the Dix Championship Celebration. As tonight, Dix Championship Celebration, where you see the greatest Mind pickleball judges, players in the world competing for the title of U.S. Open champion. Kovalova judges, and Tarashenko in the near court have battled Line their judges, way uphill ready? back into this match. Line And you can still see that they're able to back her up off that line, that last second drop back. It doesn't guarantee a disaster, but it does mean. <laughs> oh, yeah. Point. But it does mean that she's a little more likely to be off balance when she hits that ball. And with Tarashenko and Kovalova all over the net, you better be very precise. Mark, when do you think that Simone and Corinne might want to give them a different look. Point. Well, they've got to do something to disrupt their rhythm. It's now 10-8, and uh, this is game point here, Tarashenko. 10-8-2. The second server. Well, I'll tell you what, you're <laughs> watching some incredible rallies here between these two teams, but to watch them in person, Mark, you really get the feel of how talented these athletes are. 8-10-1. Yeah, I often hear from people when I'm traveling around coaching is that um, people say, hey, I was at this event, I saw the pros play, and it's so much faster than I expected. And Second unfortunately, server. some people think that pickleball, um, you know, it's a slow game. You don't have to move very much. These women are showing Eight, us ten, that two. the key skill here is athleticism and the willingness to chase down that ball to get into a great position to handle difficult shots from your opponents. Simone a little frustrated as that one goes into the net. Now another... Game point opportunity. Ten, eight, one. And Kovalova. Oh. So, um, Drew, you asked about when they might see a different look. In that last point, Simone Jardine really covering the middle there, really sort of putting pressure on Kovalova Ten, eight, two. and Tarashenko if they want to get it to her. They better be very careful. You can see how much in the co into Corinne's court Simone is right now. Her foot's over the line. Oh, oh found a way. And that's a Point. fortunate Point. way for Kovalova and Tarashenko to win that first game right off the net. Three minutes between games. Like and Irina just doing a really great job of keeping Corinne back. Sometimes pickleball, a game of inches. Tarashenko and Kovalova come back 11-8 after game number one. Headed to the second frame when we come back. Overhead look of East Naples Community Park here at the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville. 54 courts here, and there is no place in the country where you'll find as many pickleball courts than there are right here. You know what's awesome, guys, just to come here during your average Monday or Tuesday, and those courts are full. Yeah, pickleball okay, courts, it doesn't ready matter now. how many you have, Drew. So we're starting Pickleball players, you're going to fill them up. With Simone and Corinne serving to yeah, Irina and have filled Lucy up the seats at here zero, at Zing zero, Zang two. Championship Court. A festive crowd on hand for this Women's Pro Doubles Championship and a game one taken by Tarashenko and Kovalova. Yeah, and there's no other, there is no other stadium court like this in all of pickleball. So players just love to come here and play. Zero, zero, just one. feels like a special and electrifying venue for them. So we continue to see the same strategy that 
Tereshenko and Kovalova were using early on, targeting Karin Kar, especially on that forehand dink. So I'm thinking, you asked earlier, Melissa, about what one might they do one. to give them a different look. Well, they could switch. Maybe they put Karin on the left side. Let's see if her backhand can sustain a little bit of the pressure. Maybe do a little bit of moving, switching during the point, Second so that server. it's not so easy to get the ball to Carr, because right now, Kovalova, Tereshenko, they can get the ball to one Karin Carr every single time. And if they continue to do that, well, if point. history repeats itself, Carr and Jardim are going to have a lot of trouble. Yeah, I think that's probably what I would do here, because Simone has a fierce two handed two. backhand herself. And it might be worth a try. Point. Yeah, because you can really see now Corinne is starting to feel the pressure, and Lucy is just really zoned in. Yeah, and nothing against Corinne, she's an excellent player, but anyone who is repeatedly under pressure again and again and again, um, you know, you're, you're going to start missing eventually. Yeah, and we still see that Jardine is really covering the middle. She's really taking, she's moving over to that line, daring, um, daring Kovalov and Tereshenko to get that ball out wide. The trouble for Jardim is Tereshenko and Kovalova have been able to do it. Oh, just wide. And Corinne certainly held her own there. They were giving her all kinds of looks down that line, and she was ready for each one of them. Okay, that's it. That time. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, that's what you were saying, Melissa. Yeah, I mean, that's just uh, Mark needing to do something different, and that different is getting Simone into the game. And that's Simone was trying to do that tried a little bit too much and it just wasn't a ball she was going to be able to make. Yeah. Right, and then this this is the, the counterpoint to that. As Jardine covers more and more of the middle, that exposes the left side of the court. Kovalova sees that here, that Jardine's in the middle of the court, plays a little cross-court backhand, and that's a clean winner. And Lucy obviously very aware that that's what's happening, and she is keeping Simone honest by hitting that ball behind her. Yeah. The other thing I think that we could start to see here is maybe that, um, oh, so this is, this is interesting. It looks like Carr is now gonna be playing from the left side. I think they heard us back here. We're gonna find out if they switch or if they play straight Bring up on. like this. Let's pay attention to where Carr moves after she returns. They're playing straight up. Ah, and look at that. One little change, just changing the position, and they don't even have to hit a ball. Kovalova misses that third shot drop, perhaps thrown off by the difference. But I don't understand now why they wouldn't continue to have Carr play the left side. It worked on that last point. Yeah, well, maybe they just wanted to see if it would work once to get them that much-needed point that they were that they were looking for. Yeah, so we call this a half stack. When you stack, when you put both your players on the same side of the court, when you're only serving or only returning, that's a half stack. A full stack is when you adjust, you do that, that switching on both the serve and return. So uh, what Jardim and Kara are showing us right now is that they're content half stacking, just doing it on... that distinctive sound <laughs> of paddle to pickleball that really makes this sport so unique. Oh, it does. It's what many of us like to wake up to in the morning. We can't wait to get out there. Mm. Yeah, and that's just Simone trying to do a bit too much. The ball wasn't really hers. Now, guys, I want you to explain one, three, one. the refereeing in an event like this, three, three, the U.S. Three, Open. We've had a few disputed calls three, three, naturally throughout the week, but altogether, how does an event like this be officiated? Well, you have certified refs that are typically out here 
on these championship matches, Drew, well, which means they are, they've been through some extensive training and evaluation to become certified and considered the best of the best. We have Gail Scavangelli that is with us here today, refing this match on championship court. Gail is out of Virginia and also Bye, spends everyone. time here in Naples. She has spent a lot of hours here this week. Wow. Uh, my friend definitely is one of the best diggers of the game, her and Simone both. And now here they're going to give them that look again, Mark. Yeah, so I like this. Let's see what happens here with Corinne Carr playing on the left side. There it is. There's another point. And so two for two, so right? I know. So, so to me, we say, look, we're doing well when you're playing on the left side. Let's continue to do that, whether we're serving, whether we're turning. But you can see they're stacking again. Corinne's going to play the right side of the court this time. I'm not sure why. Be interesting to find out afterwards why they wouldn't stick with something that's, um, that's working for them. Yeah, and I'd be interested to find out too. Maybe the thought is it's doing just enough to cause some discomfort on the other side, but yet they still want to keep Simone in her power side. Corral trying to pump some life into the team of Jardim and Carr. Yeah, that's a good shot by Corinne. We're seeing some great pickleball play by these ladies tonight, Four game one, very tight game. And here we are in another tight one. Remember best two of three. So if Tereschenko and Kovalova can find a way here in game two, they would be champions. Wow. And just out. Looked like there for a second, Simone had made the get of the game. That's, that's good defense from Carr getting the ball back in play. And that was a good example of a nice deep return by Lucy, keeping Corinne back, and she just couldn't get a play on the ball to get it back over to the other side. Very important pickleball to return those serves deep. And so I think right now Tereschenko and, and Kovalov are probably telling each other, hey, let's stick to the plan. The plan is not to hit balls to Simone. If you've got a high ball that you're going to hit hard, keep it away from her. A couple of unforced errors here. That's now the seventh unforced error for Kovalov and Tereschenko in this game. Cannot keep giving them side outs eventually, Simone and Carr. Gonna make you pay. Yes, they will. And there's an example right there, Drew. It's like you have ESP. Five, six, one. That breeze is really picking up and swirling in here at the moment. Mm. Yeah. And Simone has certainly found a way to get herself into this game, Mark. Mm -hmm. That's right. She's moving well. She's covering a lot of space. I got to hand it to Corinne, though. She's started to weather the storm a little bit more. I like there that she went for a powerful shot. Just like that. It is 6-6. Six, six. Yeah. And so we're going to have a timeout here. They're going to go talk it over. Jardim and Carr take the lead, 7-6, and with the serve when we return to Naples. It has been such a pleasure to spend the week here in Naples, Florida at the Minto U.S. Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville, and great to be with Melissa McCurley and Mark Renison. Drew Felio's here, and the matches that we have seen on these final seconds. few days. Guys, Ryan are they amongst the best that this championship has ever seen? They absolutely are. Okay, In the past, we have seen what appears to be seven, some jitters six, by these players. One. You know, not used to this type of crowd watching them. All these players have now had the opportunity to experience that over a couple of years, and it doesn't seem to have any effect here tonight. I think Simone just hit the ball to every single part of the court. <laughs>
Look at this soft yeah. shot coming up here, that little drop shot. Good work by Lucy Kovalo get, getting to that ball, making Simone play one more shot. Simone was playing right in the middle of the court, which she's still doing. And right now, Lucy and Irina don't seem Second to have, have noticed that, but I think they will here soon. Mark, you called her earlier this Eight, week. Six, Serena Williams of pickleball, I think, was very fitting. She has found a place at the top of the sport. It just doesn't look like she wants to relinquish that spot anytime soon. No, she's not looking to do that at all. Although she will tell you, you know, she's getting older. Simone is 38 Six, years old, 81. playing like she's in her 20s. And that, of course, is one of the beauties of this great sport. You can play and play well until your 60s and 70s. Oh, and beyond. I'd say when we do our clinics, I'd say the vast majority of the people in my clinics are um, are definitely over 50. And you know, every once in a while, we get someone, uh, someone who's well over their 50s. Let's say it's considered a life-changing sport, but it's also considered a lifetime sport. We have all kinds of professional athletes who have transitioned into pickleball and able to use pickleball to keep that competitive fire burning. Point. So you can see Simone here pumping up Corinne. She's really trying to um, use the energy she's got to also boost Nine, six, the confidence one. of her partner, and so far it's working well. Scores 8 6 1. 9, nine six, 6 1, pardon me. Yeah. And she has really boosted that positive that confidence of Corinne here. And yeah. what you see her doing is telling Corinne one point at a time, just one point at a time. And yep. That sets up game point here to send this to a third and decisive game. 10-6-1, Corinne Carr serving Four, from the ten, right side. Six, one. And the crowd here certainly would like to see a third game. Oh, oh. wow. And if that well. doesn't show you, these ladies aren't putting it all out on the line and how important this match is to them to remain dominant as the Women's Open doubles champions in every event that they enter. Well, this crowd really understands this great game and they appreciate the effort they are seeing right now. Another game point here for Carr and Jardim. Side oh, out. It. So here we go, another side out. So. Lucy and Irina said, nope, nope, not, not just yet, ladies. Six, ten, one. What a dig. Oh, wow. Point. So one of the really important skills in pickleball is to be able to receive that fastball and not always hit it back fast. Because if you're hitting it fast, you're hitting it high over the net, and your opponents can pounce on it. But to be able to receive a fastball, hit it back slow and soft, keep that ball low. Well done by Corinne right there. Oh, that was great, great by Corinne, creating that opening for herself to be able to get that ball, create some space, get that ball pushed down the middle behind Irina. Great job. That's the best drive we've seen from Lucy Kovalova in this match. And frankly, I expected to see more drives from that team. In this game, that was just their second, third shot drive of the whole game. Getting closer, now just two down. Statistician, Josh Elliott, helping us out here tonight. Oh, big one hit into the net by Kovalova. Now a chance to force that game three. Hear the crowd getting behind Carr right here on this serve. 10-8-1, game point. Second serve. Yeah, and I'd like to see them uh, not get into a Corinne Ten, and eight, Irina two. battle here. That's not worked in these last two rallies, and let's see if they can do something a little different. Oh. Is, that, is that the attack. battle you're talking about, Melissa? That's the battle I was talking about, Mark. You've got to be careful that you don't get into those individual battles, right? You've got to keep the team perspective in well, mind. Ten, well, you can you can get into those individual battles if you're winning them, mm -hmm. right? Um, but what you need to do is you need to have the presence of mind to figure out which patterns are successful and which ones aren't. Try to play the ones that are working for you as much as you can and try to stay out of the ones that are causing you trouble. Guys, 
Kozlova and Tarashenko. They are not going away here. Oh, no, they're not. And you, it's, the energy in here is just fantastic, and there's momentum on both sides of the court. That's exactly what I was talking about. We just had that kind of energy and cheer on Irina and Lucy's side. Next rally, it's over here on Simone. Big second serve oh, goes wow. into the net. Wow. And you can just hear the crowd gasp. I, that's more than a gasp, I think. <laughs> it sucked the air out of here, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's getting Hi, rowdy. It's team. The score is 10, yeah, nine, one, probably smart to take a timeout. It's a timeout for nine, Kovlova nine, and Tarashenko. Corinne Carr is going to come back to serve for the second game. Beautiful city of Naples, Florida. The pickleball capital of the world. And they're seeing a great match here in women's pro doubles as Jardine and Corinne have a chance once again to finish off in this second game. Tereschenko and Kovalo will try and force the game three. Great concentration there by Corinne. You gotta love that. Just exactly the boost that she's gonna need going into game three. Yeah, look, this is a good shot by Tereschenko, but it caught right off the top of the net and actually sat up nice and high and easy put away for Corinne Carr. She's gonna be very happy to have won that point. So with a little help of the net, we're headed to a game three. This crowd loving it here on Zing Zang Championship Court. A match to remember, and women's pro doubles continues. All well, the vendor areas jumping this week at the Minto US Open Pickleball Championships, powered by Margaritaville. Our vendors setting up shock. See Margaritaville in there. Also Durafast Ball, the official ball of the Minto US Open Pickleball Championships, and Paddle Tech also making a big statement here in 2018. Oh yeah, definitely are. And, and the vendor expo tent is really the best in pickleball too, Drew. And they were really helped out with a couple of rain delays this week too. So when the players aren't playing and it's raining, they're shopping. Gotta say the sets that were set up, state of the art. I just kind of want to go hang out, sample some of the great products that were on hand. And it's amazing, Mark, how the products in this game continue to evolutionize. Paddles, balls, shoes, uh, paraphernalia, gear as well. It's really hot. Yeah, that's right. The, uh, you know, the game is evolving so much and so is the equipment. And not to mention the fact that there's money on the line. These women aren't just playing out here for fun. They're playing for cash. And so all the companies know this and they want to be able to make the best possible equipment, not just for their players, their sponsored players like the ones we see out here, but for all the people at home. You want to play with great equipment. You want to play with the same equipment as the pros. So there's a real sort of arms race going on with the different manufacturers who can provide the equipment that's going to give the most power, the most control, and the most ability to spin the ball. And when you are a perennial champion like Simone Jardine, you have to deal with Prince and she is one of the most established players in the sport of pickleball. If you have a champion like this, let's watch this point, and I'll continue with my question. As the point's going to be won by Tereschenko and Kovalova. How far can you take it, Mark, as far as sponsorships, deals? Melissa, I know you know something about this as well. Oh, yeah, and that's one of the things that uh, used to be a, a lot more informal that's getting more formal with actual contracts. Mm. You know, it, it kind of went from apparel type sponsors and just to put their their logo on on these players and now you know it's advanced to these players getting actual contracts with some significant dollars out here we have the prince to engage in paddle tap also had representatives from franklin here as well throughout the week dick sporting goods also watching some great pickleball yeah, this is the best that it gets, Drew. These are some fantastic matches that we're seeing here on center court. And matches have been rolling on center court since 8 a.m. this morning. Over 4,000 matches this week here at East Naples Community Park. 2,000 players playing in those. We have 
47 steps. So I'm listening to, to tell you something about how close these two teams are, how similar their game styles are tonight. In both game one and game two, each team hit 17 third shot drops, the exact same number. And so these two teams are playing remarkably similar style of pickleball. It's an effective style. You use that third shot drop to limit your opponent's ability to hit the ball hard. They're up at the net, and if that ball drops low into the kitchen, they're going to play it back, but they're going to play it back softly and not do too much damage. And all four of these women are looking to use that third shot drop as a way to start to set up the point and look for something that they can put away. And we were just talking about the number of players and, and matches here. We had players represented from 47 states and 17 countries, furthest coming from India. Players ranging from the age of 9 to 91 played here. We had, we had nine men in the 80-plus singles bracket. Two of them were over 90. I don't think any tournament, though, is too big for pickleballtournaments.com, though, isn't it? Melissa, tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, pickleballtournaments.com handles online tournament management registration, and it simultaneously runs multiple brackets automatically, allowing you to run hundreds at a time. Bracket ending scheduling, it's a master at helping tournament directors' jobs be just that much easier. In the meantime, third shot sports is becoming more and more of a household name here in Naples. This car takes care of that one. No third shot there, Mark, but tell us how important third shot sports is to growing this great game. Well, we work really hard to provide the best pickleball instruction all across North America. So whether it's online at thirdshotsports.com or when I travel around North America doing clinics for not just high-level players like we see out here, but for regular recreational players at their pickleball clubs or at their community centers. We travel all over bringing um, high-quality, fast-paced, and really fun and practical pickleball training for everybody. Tied at two. So we continue to see the same strategy that Kovalova and Tereshenko have been using uh, from early on. They continue to target Karin Kara, especially on that forehand side in the soft dinking game. Simone Jardine continues to take up space in the middle of the court, essentially uh, telling Tereshenko and Kovalova, hey, if you want to get it to Karin, you got to get it past me first. One of the things that Corinne told me earlier today is that her and Roth are going to take off on a crazy traveling schedule this year. They're going to Alaska, Iceland, Switzerland, and possibly Germany. They're trying to get all their travel in, Drew. People are going to really enjoy hearing this so they can start a family. Perhaps a pickleball cruise, too, in the mix in <laughs> that, Mark. I, I'm, I'm sure you've heard a lot about those, and Melissa, you too as well. It seems like the pickleball community is very small. Everybody knows each other. I'd say it's a very big community, but it's a tight community. Mm -hmm. uh, the degrees of separation for people are quite small. The number of times that I go somewhere and I say, hey, Mark, I, you know, I, I know we're in California right now, but I just did a clinic with my sister. My, you did a clinic with my sister in Maryland last week. The community is small. It's pretty tight. People talk. People know each other. And that's one of the reasons people love it, because you can be going on holiday somewhere, pack your paddle in your bag, and you never know where you might find a pickleball court. Yeah, pickleball cruises, pickleball trips, pickleball camps. I mean, it's just pickleball crazy, Drew. Pickleball crazy. And we are seeing a crazy one here. Back and forth, back and forth. Kovlova and Tereshenko are starting to go a little bit more to the power game. They've already hit three third shot drives. Uh, they're still looking to play the third shot drop most of the time, but I think they're looking to speed things up occasionally to see if they can keep Karin Carr and Simone Jardine guessing. Yeah, and Drew, you've asked about mental and physical fatigue, and these players here are showing none of that today, and we're seeing some tremendous mental Three, four, focus two. from all of these players. I'm especially impressed with what we're seeing from Corinne and her mental focus. So far we've seen, I think, four unforced errors in this, in this third game. Five, I'm told, from stats guru Josh Elliott. Five unforced errors four, early four, on in this two. game. If one of these teams can reduce the number and start making a few more balls, 
they're going to have an advantage pretty quickly. Somebody was trying to form a point there, Drew, and it wasn't quite fully formulated. You know what I've learned this week in this great game, my first real baptism into it. Mark, I think you said it best earlier in the week. Sometimes you attack in pickleball, other times you just sort of weather the storm, and the teams that can weather the storm the best seem to be the most successful. That's right, not every ball you hit is a ball that you can win a point with. Sometimes you just need to get the ball back and play, or sometimes you just need to try to get the ball back and play in a way that your opponents can't maintain their pressure. So typically that's by hitting a drop, a low, slow ball. Your opponents are likely to get the ball back and play. I mean, it's a slow ball at them, for goodness sakes. But if it's low enough, it limits their ability to hit down on it. And if they can't hit down, they're going to have trouble hitting fast and still keeping the ball in. Simone Jardim getting ready to serve her team up 6-4 in game three. Yeah, and so in the third game, when the first team to get to six, they will switch sides. So we now have Simone and Corinne on the end nearest us here. We see an Irene on the far side of the court. So there is a really good high backhand volley hit by Lucy Kovlova. She hit this one with two hands. That's her preferred way of doing it. Earlier in the match, she hit a few backhand volleys with one hand and missed those ones. So let's look to see if Lucy keeps using that second hand on the backhand side so she can keep the power that she is known for playing with. Four, six, two. And it is breezy in here, and, and Drew, it's actually gotten quite cool. Not something that we have said. This week in Naples. No, but we didn't have the record heat that we've had in prior years. Uh, we did deal with a little rain, but that just helped keep it cooler. Five, six, two. And another tight one here. <laughs> so the score is. 6-5-1 with Corinne Carr serving from the right side of the court. Six, five, Game one. goes to 11. You've got a win by two points. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Corinne wasn't quite able to get herself set on that one before it came back, and it sailed very long on Six, her. Five, two. So again, there's that indecision we talked about earlier, whether to play that ball out of the air or to let it bounce. Car looks much more comfortable when she takes the ball out of the air. Yeah, she does. And Irina doing a really good job with Karen at continuing to keep those balls, pushing her back, pushing them at her feet. Five, six, trying to create a unforced error out of Karen. Or I should say create a forced well, error. I was going to say, yeah, if you create it, then... Uh. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's been a long day. Good job to stay alive here, guys. What? Oh. Can't score. All right, we got a second serve here. Five, six, two. So again, we're seeing a little bit of everything here. Slow balls, fast balls, high ones, low ones, even something off the net. That's how pickleball goes. It's the players who have a wide range of skills that are the ones that do the best, the ones who don't only rely on the power game or the soft game, but can adapt to the situation in front of them and draw from a whole bunch of tools. <laughs> Corinne just continuing to stand her ground there. So that's one of the risks when you stack. You saw Corinne, it was her turn to serve from the left. She was serving from the left, she slid over. But that's a lot of ground she's got to cover, and if she doesn't cover that ground quickly enough and she's a little bit off balance, it's tough to make a quality third shot drop. 
And that was a real quality third shot drop there, or a drop shot, I should say, right onto Irina's backhand. Doing drop shots to people's backhands is really difficult for them to return. Even at a pro level, that can be a challenging shot. And Lucy said, get out of here, ball. Big put away by Lucy Kovalova. Yeah, you can see how excited Lucy is here when she puts this ball away. Five, eight, one. That gives them the side out. They're now serving 5-8-1. They're looking to get a couple points here. Game goes to 11. Oh, and Karen just wasn't quite able to get out of the way of that ball. So that is a point for Lucy and Irina. So that to me is a little bit of an impatient shot. I don't mind the drive. Uh, I don't mind using that fastball. But uh, Lucy's got to do a better job to keep that ball in play to force Jardine to get a shot. Oh. <laughs> Those were great hits by Lucy. And that ball just missed. You can see how bad she wanted that. Six inches too long. Yeah. And you can see you can see the importance this match has on the face of all four ladies. Okay, nine six one. They're only two points away from winning this match. Let's see if Karin Carr, Simone Jardine keep the pressure on. Or if Kovalov and Tarashenko can come back. Oh, probably should have let it go. Uh, you know what? I think she was thinking about letting it go. And uh, just couldn't get out of the way quite in time. This is championship point right here. How about this? Point. What a point. That point has this crowd absolutely fired up. Folks, it just does not get better than that in this game of pickleball. And the crowd certainly showing their appreciation. Well, if you're paid to be here on Zing Zang Championship Court, you've gotten your money's worth and so much more. That's another championship point. Wow. Irina Tarashenko did not blink. Karinkar was coming in with that high swinging forehand volley. Tarashenko was all over it. Counterattacked well, played a winner of her Six, own. 6 10 1. Kovalov and Tarashenko have some work to do. But it's been the unforced errors, guys, in this game three that have really haunted Tarashenko and Kovalov. Yeah, I would agree. That was uh, just a shot Lucy typically makes. And there's another. So two more chances here. That's another championship point. I mean, Melissa, how fitting would it be if Corinne is the one to hit the winning shot here? She's uh. worked so hard. She's been under pressure early. Let's see what happens. Mm, what a great forehand volley from Lucy Kovalova. A little bit of a misdirect there. It looked like she was going to hit a cross court. She laid the back, the paddle face, just a little bit to go down the line for a winner. And Lucy's done a great job of getting that ball behind Simone all night. Another championship point for Carr and Jardim. They fought off one. Can they fight off another? And yes, they, they can. And they do. So keeping it exciting in here for all of us tonight. Six. Although that didn't work, Mark, I like to see that from Lucy, right? She had tried a couple of drives. That didn't work. So there she tried to drop the ball into the kitchen. Yeah, the thing is, though, if you hit that drop, if you don't hit it perfectly, you're essentially giving the point away. You're, it's a high, slow ball that is relatively easy for your opponents to hit. So the drop is a really important shot to be able to hit, but it's high risk. If you don't hit it well, you're in trouble. 
Another chance at championship point. East side out. <laughs> Gamesmanship. Yeah. Both teams fighting hard to the end. This is the fifth match point for Jardim and Carr. Can they win it here? of those young women there. Tremendous play out here on center court. Wow, so it was Corinne Carr who hit the final shot for her team. You know what, she, she, had a, she had a tough match early on. They picked on her, she held up to the pressure. I think it's fitting that she's the one who hit the winning shot for her team. What a journey and what a finish for Simone Jardim and Corinne Carr. Champions in women's pro doubles. An emotional moment here on Zing Zang Championship Court. We're back in a moment. Well, night has fallen here at the Minto US Open Pickleball Championships presented by Margaritaville. And what a match we just saw in the women's pro doubles as Simone Jardim and Corin Carr victorious over Arena Tereschenko and Lucy. Kovalova, Jardim going down in elation on championship point and this crowd behind her from start to finish and Corinne Carr, tremendous as well. And a match to remember for sure here on Zing Zang Championship Court. Great to have you with us everybody here on CBS Sports. Drew Felios and thrilled to be joined tonight by John Colon, the founder and CEO of Margaritaville. Also Tamar Decker is here as well and they are handing out our medals and our prizes to our duo, Simone Jardim and Corinne Carr. So winners taking home head shoes, head sweats, champion hats, gold medals, prize, me prize money, and complimentary entries into the License to Chill VIP Lounge for 2019. The prize money awarded to two champions in a match that we're going to remember for a very long time, guys. It was certainly one to remember, and Simone, for you, it had extra special meaning because you're a triple crown winner once again. Yeah, thank you. Um, I felt uh, like Corinne, you know, had uh, to do a lot of work and uh, is usually like that, and, and she steps up to the plate every time. Uh, she had to do it last year as well, so I have the best partner and she's just I mean she, you, you saw what she did incredible Corinne I know last year was special but this year with this crowd this atmosphere and for what you're about to embark on in your life probably a little more special too as well huh it's certainly special um it's actually extra special because I was able to help Simone reach the <laughs> triple crown um and you know it's always great to walk her away with the with the gold medal well, it's a joy to watch you guys play. Also, John, Tamara, thank you so much for presenting our awards here tonight and being part of this spectacle at the Minto US Open Pickleball Championships powered by Margaritaville. Great to have you with us tonight on CBS Sports Network.